Welcome back to Upside Down Data. Let's talk about Chainlink and if it's ready to start the next phase of the bull market. So if you're not familiar, Chainlink is an Oracle protocol. It's able to connect blockchains with real world data from the outside, something that blockchains can't do on their own. And a more recent development that Chainlink underwent was the cross-chain communication, CCIP, cross-chain interoperability protocol. This allows different blockchains, both public and private, to speak to each other across Chainlink, something that also is not possible with most blockchains. Most blockchains, for example, Ethereum, can't just on its own talk to Solana. You need some kind of protocol to bridge that. CCIP is something that can connect any different blockchain with any other blockchain. So those are two of the big uses amongst some others that Chainlink plays. So given that, oracles are very important to decentralized finance. In the last market cycle for Link, that, you know, basically Link started all the way back here in 2017, had this massive run up to the top, the all-time high for Link here in May of 2021. This was by and large fueled by DeFi. Link was a massive infrastructure play for DeFi. DeFi protocols need these oracles to be able to know what are the prices of assets outside of a blockchain, on other blockchains, on exchanges, things like that. That is what Link is able to provide. And so that was what really fueled it. And so then as DeFi became less of a hot narrative and as that kind of died off, and especially as DeFi kind of fell behind due to regulatory pressures in the US, then Link also struggled. And it had the bear market, it had this really long range for those who were around for this. This was pretty brutal to go through, just sideways nothingness for a very long time. Then we had some resurgence, but then we cooled off again. And what Link has really been waiting for, what Chainlink's really been waiting for, is some kind of a spark to reignite some of that hype and some of that interest. And that might be what we got with the election. So, of course, with Trump winning, he positioned himself as the pro-crypto candidate. One of the areas that's very likely to benefit from a Trump presidency is DeFi. And so if DeFi does have a renaissance, a resurgence, you might expect Chainlink, again, being that really important piece of infrastructure for DeFi currently, it is by far the most used Oracle service for decentralized protocols. It might have a very nice run up as a result of that. Now, the other thing that people who are followers of Chainlink will talk about is they'll say, well, forget DeFi, forget all that stuff. That is peanuts compared to what Chainlink is doing with organizations like Swift. Basically, Chainlink is trying to position itself as being not just this important piece of infrastructure within crypto, but a key piece of infrastructure to bridge traditional finance to the digital asset space, or even just allow traditional finance to use crypto rails to make things more efficient and better. And so Chainlink has been doing a multiple different things with organizations like Swift and others. And right now it's in the early stages. These are mostly just pilot programs, but this is what a lot of the Chainlink bulls really point to as being the big narrative. Now that's all possible. One of the things I do want to mention with this, in terms of the actual fundamental impact on Chainlink, I think in the next six months to a year, it's probably not going to be there, right? This, these things are not going to materialize overnight. It's going to take time for these kind of use cases to actually be built. So more what matters right now, and especially if we're about to go into a full on altcoin bull market, which is very possible, especially with Trump's election acting as potential catalyst, less regulatory pressure likely coming, altcoins suddenly look more attractive, is that it's all about the narratives. That's really what we care about. So DeFi is one that we know if it really catches on, like last time, it could be rocket fuel for Chainlink. But also Link kind of has this unique position where people could also take the narrative of, oh, Link is gonna be much more than that. The potential is massive here, and that could also really drive its price up. If retail comes back and they're met with this narrative and they are come to believe that Chainlink really is the next big thing, it's going to become this massive critical piece of infrastructure for traditional finance, that could really send things soaring, even if none of those actual use cases are realized at that time. That's the way it works in bull markets. It's all about the narrative. It's very little about the actual fundamentals. So that's where, for me personally, I care not about whether or not these use cases actually happen in any short amount of time, but is the narrative there that these things are going to happen? Because if that's the case, that's what retail will latch onto. They will see Link as the next massive thing they need to get in on before it explodes. And that's what can lead you to have these massive run-ups 
in price. So that's where I think Link is in a nice position right now. If we do see that DeFi renaissance, and especially with some of the other things it has going on, it could be one that really catches attention and shoots things up. There are a lot of narratives that can be spun around Chainlink that would make it very attractive to a retail audience entering the space for either for the first time or for the first time in a long time. Okay, so that's a bit more about the context and some of the narratives that could be potential drivers of a next move up for Chainlink. I want to move now to talking a bit about the data, some of our models and what they're seeing about Chainlink right now and how that plays into those possible narratives leading price action. So I want to first talk about our long-term risk model, our long-term upside downside potential indicator. If you've never seen this before, higher values mean higher risk, lower values mean lower risk, and it cares what moves that play out over months to multiple months. So more longer term in its time horizon, hence the name. And so when you're getting really high on this metric, you'll see that that tends to coincide with these tops, these local tops, or even cycle tops. Whereas when you get to the really low ends of the scale, those are historically fantastic buying opportunities for chain link. So especially when you get down to all the way to the bottom of these scales. Now, where we sit right now is a pretty good spot for a bull market. I mean, look back over here, for example, there were multiple times when Link got back down to similar risk levels it was before. And in those bull markets, that was a good acquisition point before things went up further. Certainly, as we got down to the bottom of this range, these were fantastic buying opportunities, even down here before we go up further. So if Link is ready to break out, get back up to these prior highs from earlier on this cycle and especially break off to even maybe getting up to new all-time highs, we like to see it currently being at low risk levels. So this is a good sign. And if we're going to be entering into that full bull market, I think the entirety of the scale is in play. You much rather be buying at this point than at this point. So not financial advice, of course, you should make your own opinions, but that's what I'm seeing when I look at this model. And if we look at the short-term version of the UPI, so similar in its interpretation, but it cares about moves that play over days to weeks, so much shorter in its time horizon. Similar story. In the short term, we still have more room to run. So that's where I think this breakout that Link seems to be showing here, breaking out of this old range down here, back into this prior area, I think we have more room to move in here. And I would not be surprised to be seeing a revisit to the higher ends of this range at the least before maybe we have some consolidation before ultimately continuing the way up. Depends how explosive this would all play out. If there are broader pullbacks in the crypto market, that might slow things down. If Bitcoin gets really explosive and just keeps rocketing up to 100K, I think Chainlink is going to follow in short order as well, most likely. So that's what I'm seeing from a risk perspective. Now, the other thing that we can talk about is the trend. And this is one of the things we can look at to know when are these trends maybe starting to peter out? When are those pullbacks, those consolidations, likely coming local tops, likely forming. So the trend confidence indicator, as the name suggests, cares about trend. And so the way that I like to read this, and the best way in my view to read this model, is to look at how it is moving relative to price. You see the TCI start to move up aggressively, then price will often follow. Then if you see the TCI start moving down aggressively, then price will also follow that. It tends to act as a leading indicator. At watching the behavior of the TCI gives you insight into where the next break in price action is likely to fall. Is it likely to break to the upside or break to the downside? And so when you look more recently with Link, we see that we're starting to break to the upside, that we were in this kind of consolidation in a slight downtrend through this period. We're now breaking off to the upside. So what I'm going to be watching for is, does this continue? That's what we really like to see, this continue up. And then when is that time when we see a major breakdown? Like for example here, see it start trend up aggressively, price followed, major breakdown here, and then price just consolidated. It stopped right then. Move up, down aggressively, price stopped, and then it actually corrected. When does that happen next? And that doesn't have to happen in any short amount of time. We could run a good amount before we see that happen. But when we do, that might suggest that a local top or at least a period of consolidation might be coming. But again, in a full on bull market, that could just be a buy the dip opportunity more than something extremely concerning. So this is a model that I like to keep an eye on for those shorter term considerations, and then also look at risk and where that is at the same point in time. If risk gets pretty elevated, and then you see the TCI move down aggressively, that's a pretty reasonable signal that you're probably getting to at least a local top. But if you're at low risk, 
that's when you might see that breakout like we're seeing on the TCI to the upside really have room to move. So that's what I'm going to be watching here. So to wrap up my thoughts about Chainlink, I think it's finally time for Chainlink to catch up some ground. People have been very bearish on Chainlink for a while, saying, why doesn't it move? Why isn't it doing anything? Look at all these fundamentals that it has going for it. Why isn't it doing something? I think finally now we're at a point where the broader market is poised to be bullish. The narratives could very well come into line and very much benefit Link in this type of environment. And I think we could actually finally have some moves to the upside. So not financial advice, you should make your own views. But as I said in recent videos, this is the most bullish I felt in altcoins in a long time, especially with the narratives that come along with the Trump victory and everything else that we're seeing. And this is why I think that right now is very possible. We're going to look back at this in six months to a year and just see it very much like we see some of these periods back here and say, oh man, that was such a clear buying opportunity. It's an exciting time. I'm excited right now. And obviously anyone can be wrong, but when I just look at the data, it's hard. And I look at the narratives and how things are forming. Unless something really goes off the rails, we have some horrible recession or something else crazy happens. I think this is a really nice potential setup. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us over on X. A lot of updates about our models and more over there. And go to our website, pluridigital.io to see live data from our models and more.